for that too. Positive encouragement, how you hype up your teammates, how you treat each other. If you're just gonna be negative and hard the whole time and tough, it's not gonna work. So positivity like that is what we're looking for too. So fix that, okay, let's go. I don't see Legends Basketball as a club program or as a league. It's more of a philosophy. Any club can be a Legends club, whatever the name they want to call it. As long as you're providing an opportunity for kids to play basketball, helping kids with their social problems or anxiety or academics, making their life easier, giving them a place to train, mentoring them, that's what Legends is about. We don't want to be unique, right? For us, it's not about being different. We just want to help whoever we can. If you can't play in this club or that club, play at Legends. We're just offering you another home, another opportunity to play basketball. It's not about competing with other clubs or competing with other organizations. We're just another option for people who don't have any, right? Whether it's them at this age or older guys like Resty giving an opportunity to play ball to show that he can, you know, he can play or he can coach or Jack and Steven who are, may not have gotten the opportunities that they deserved, but for whatever reason they didn't get, to give them a chance to show that spot like, yeah, we can, we can not only hoop, we can coach, we have what it takes. It's an interesting story. I walked into a pickup ball game at a local community gym, and I saw a guy grab a player's knee and almost take it out. It was pretty dangerous, so I realized at this point, guys need an environment where they can play basketball in a safer way, and men's leagues often does that. Pickup ball is great and it's fun, but it can be dangerous without referees or people being held accountable. So I started Men Legends Men's Basketball I think about three years ago. And I remember begging guys to play and had a tough time doing that. And I think in the first season we had about 50 guys play the league with only 40 guys paying. And then we built off of that, off a culture of, you know, positivity and good vibes and just good basketball. And now we're entering season six. My name is Mohammed Zahid. I am the founder and CEO of the Al Hassan Foundation, which is one of the sponsors for Legends Basketball Youth Club, as well as one of the men's basketball players from season one. When we heard that Legends was coming together to start a youth club, uh, it's something that we knew that we wanted to help out in any way possible. Uh, with the Al Hassan Foundation, we are fortunate enough to deal with multiple different communities, multiple different age groups, and we often see kids that are you know fans of basketball and they want to play basketball yet they don't have opportunities maybe perhaps they because of uh, financial issues or any other issues so the Alhazen Foundation was started a few years back uh, in October 2017 one of my best friends Alhazen Ahmed he passed away in a car accident he used to be an employee here an avid basketball uh, basketball player and basketball fan uh, when we heard that they were going on about this project we sat down with the commissioner of the Rahman we sat down we had a discussion and we realized that there was one child specifically that you know who loved basketball and who still loves basketball but he needed that extra push and we wanted to be the first ones to be able to sponsor him give him that opportunity and really try to uh, grow out his full potential so um, that's kind of the first time that we've partnered up in terms of you know officially partnering partnering up but then whenever there are legends events the Al Hassan Foundation is usually there to help uh, in any way that they can and uh, we're always looking for brave ways to kind of help each other and better both of our organizations. When I came to Calgary, Kamish was trying to start a basketball program and it was called Sabil, it had a different name. And he asked me to help out with that program and I had said, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And in commission fashion, he does what he's gonna do. And we did it. And I just kind of committed to it because uh, I believe the vision was gonna be better than anything else that other guys were doing. And I said, let's do it for one season. And let's just get through it and like, get it done. And uh, honestly, don't regret it at all. It was probably the best decision, decision I've ever made. You know, wins and losses, I thought, you know, what we accomplished and what we were able to do beyond even basketball it's probably the stuff I remember the most, man. Like some of that stuff, hearing the stories, talking to the kids is what I think I'm gonna remember more than anything else. You know, what we did in three months, 
it's pretty crazy to think our expectations were up here when they should have been down here and we got to about the middle somewhere. So I'm okay with it. Since we're a first year club, everyone kind of underestimates us, thinks like we're not the best basketball players or, oh, it's a first year club, they're not gonna be good, right? And then we came in, our team was top three in our league and then the older team was number one. I love the underdog mentality of Legends because, you know, it's a first year club. Nobody thinks we're gonna go like and do well, but we came out, we worked hard every practice, we worked hard every game, and I feel like it showed results. I've always wanted to give back. I've always wanted to coach. So I was doing some things on the side with family, friends, kids who I saw at, you know, at your local leisure centers, you know, kids that I would see consistently, you know, every Tuesdays, every Thursdays, on the weekends. I went into just coaching some men's league teams. Abdel from Gotham asked me if I had time or if I wanted to uh, coach. And I was like, oh, wow. You know, cool. Um, and then Kamish from Legends found out, heard, because I told him that uh, Gotham was gonna have me coach. And he's like, well, before you do anything, uh, talk to me first. And that's when Kamish and I sat down and he kind of gave me the pitch on what he wanted to do with Legends Club Basketball for the first season. The area of children that he wanted to target, what his sense was and his direction on what he wanted to do in terms of the community. And that roped me in because I'm a sucker for giving back to the community. Get paid, not get paid. It's the feeling of being able to give back to the community of the experiences that I have. And just the fact that I'm allowed to coach, giving them basketball strategies as well as in life strategies, so stuff that I teach on the hard court can be transferred into your everyday life aspects as well. School, work, uh, work ethic, how to be respectful, just how you carry yourself as a person. Yeah, we say carry yourself as a Legends Club member. What that means is carry yourself as an individual who has respect, who stays humble, who wants to show the people that, hey, this is, this is who I am, this is how I am, respect me because I give respect. That, that really drew me in and right from there, I was like, hey, sign me up, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Not only that, like, we want you guys to build good habits, right? Like, once we get back to Calgary, we're, we're about to be in playoffs and we got two leagues that we want to win. So it's like, when we get back, we gotta get back to work and like work hard, right? So none of this goofy stuff no more. When we get back, it's just straight business. We're gonna do something this year. Yo, let's bring it in, come on. Legends now two, family on four, Pecan six, one, two. Legends! I think Legends helps because we, we preach the kind of culture where it's like, uh, you gotta look out for one another for sure. And we were trying to, we're trying to like eliminate the, the bad culture around basketball, like the pl politics, like we just want everybody to be able to play. You know, it doesn't matter like if you can run plays or not, because everybody learns differently, but being able to just be there for them and make sure they're having a good time is what Legends preaches and that's exactly why we're all here. Honestly, like hearing some of their background stories, some of these kids were either, I'm saying juvie or just like on the streets trying to be like gangster or something like that, not focused on like their actual life goals, just because like, the area we're growing up in, I'm not saying it's the worst, but it's just some of the kids think like, oh, since we live in the Northeast, we're hood, we're supposed to be gangsters and stuff like that. It's just, some of these kids just fall victim so easily to being yeah. influenced by them, just so they could fit in. Us coming out of high school, some of us face the struggles of not knowing what to do afterwards. And like me, I'm already three years out of high school, right? So I could say I have a little bit of experience just throughout those three years trying to figure out who I am as a person. So like being able to help these kids as well that are about to hit that step, because they might not have that help as well, right? Mm -hmm. So might as well, me being there, I could provide that help for them in order for them to have like a successful future or something. Yesterday was like, when we ran that X-Wing cut, there one player on the team, called it out right then and there. Hey, they're running this screen, get ready, rotate. 
that was like, hey, how come we didn't do that all game? You knew exactly what was coming. You could have yelled, trap's coming. Hey guys, trap's coming. I'm open right here. Because if I don't see it and my head's down, but if I hear your voice, what's my instinct? I'm going to throw it to your voice. I'm going to throw it to your voice. When you call for it, I'm going to assume that I trust you enough that you're open. But you got to do that. I think with basketball, there's some accountability for some of these guys because we've had guys in our team go to other schools, press kids, you know, get into juvenile situations where they've been suspended. And it's what I see with most kids, especially like some of the South Asian kids we have on our team. Yeah, and you know, the other minority kids we have on our team too. Like we're all minority kids. I don't, I don't think we had a, a single person that wasn't a minority on that senior team, right? So I think they don't understand that the self-esteem challenge they would have faced or just fooling around. Like with basketball, some of the guys were able to say that, hey, I want to focus on basketball because it's important to me. They're able to get themselves out of certain situations or even get respect when they go back to school and they're able to walk through the halls with a little bit more confidence and swagger where they, you know, they feel cool and they feel like they have something, an identity, right? Versus some of the kids that I see that get cuts from the teams. Like when I was at Pearson High School and we were doing cuts for over a hundred kids, I thought to myself, there's about 85 kids that are not gonna get an opportunity to play basketball. And that sucks because they might be good enough to play at a club even, but they don't have the money to play and they don't have the opportunity to play for their school. So they will do absolutely nothing. And you worry about those kids falling into juvenile behavior and patterns. Like we've seen in the Northeast, man, the stories of the kids getting shot. Like there's kids getting, like, you know, kids that got shot in our community and neighborhood in Calgary. And some of these guys know those kids and we have to have real conversations afterwards about, hey, like, you know, your friend or this person that you knew went through this adversity and you got to protect yourself. And thankfully they have an outlet where they can kind of hide away and pretend like, you know, oh, I'm going, I'm going to go play college or the NBA or whatever. And I say that with quotations because most of them are not, but it's a cover that you can use to protect yourself. But when you don't have anything where it's like, well, what are you doing at home? You're just playing games, come hang out. And you're at the wrong place at the wrong time. And then you're going to get caught up with a lot of other things. And I think our guys have the, like, how do I say this? They're, they are likely to get in those situations because of the way they act and the way they behave. And it's protected some of them. And I don't think it, it's protected them 100%, but of what could have been versus what we got has been huge. And I think a lot of kids in Calgary have benefited from sports or other aspects. So I think it's a huge thing for kids. If I didn't have sports, I wouldn't really see myself anymore. Because I never really did anything. Like I was failing school because I didn't really, I wasn't really motivated to do anything anymore. So it was just me living as a person that was pretty much it. I didn't have a reason or I didn't have things to do. But once I got into basketball, I, got, I learned more, more things that I could do with my life. Sport is the ultimate equalizer. You don't care where the person, your teammates from, their background, their ethnicity, their religion, none of that matters. You have a common goal of winning and becoming better as athletes you know, you'll do what it takes. So I always tell people sports is the, is the one thing that unites a lot of people. And it's something that if these guys didn't have, they would struggle with both in socially, even academically, because it helps you focus and getting rid of the excess energy, right? There's a lot of benefits to it. So I always tell parents, if you want to help your child, put them in sports, get them active, get them moving around, get them, you know, be part of a team culture. The, you know, the, the family environment that comes from it is unmatched. If you don't take these kids in that are already labeled as troubled, that can cause trouble, that has a potential to cause problems or is kind of leading down the wrong road. If no one jumps in to help these kids, aren't we part of that problem? Some of these kids, we didn't just choose because of, you know, basketball is part of their DNA or they have an incredible athletic ability. You know, honestly, we chose some of these kids based on the fact that, hey, this kid, has been going through so much in life that he has not caught a break. And this is a kid that has a potential to be troubled. And if we as adults notice that and not step in to do what we can to help steer them in the right direction, to give them that discipline, to give them that opportunity to show who they really are and let them shine and let them see that, hey, I'm a good kid, I can get past anything. Being able to show that basketball has its ups and downs, basketball games, you fight, fight, fight. In life, 
you have your ups and downs. And if you want to win, you fight, fight, fight. You can be down 30 points, but you still crawl back until the end of the game buzzer. It's just like life. You can be beat down, pulled down, but it's on you and your team, whether that be your family, your closest friends, your aunts, whatever, you seek out that, that team and you crawl yourself back out. No matter how long that it takes, patience. Trust the process. Learn that even in basketball, you have to practice and grind in order to make yourself better. It's just like in life. You have to practice and grind to work hard in school, pay attention, give respect when respect is deserved, to stay humble, to stay out of trouble, just like on the basketball court. And that's what we try to teach. That's what we preach. That's what we coach. That is how Legends is. If I'm hard on you, it's because I know you guys can play 10 times better. And if I wasn't hard on you, I wouldn't care. And what kind of coach would I be? Right? Our defense, we just need to get physical, guys. My name's um, Hadis Chaudhry. Uh, I was born in Canada, in Calgary and my family's from Pakistan. I first started playing basketball in grade eight, and ever since then, I've been playing basketball. Like, I used to play soccer before, then since I've played basketball, I just never wanted to play a different sport. Like, back in grade eight was the first time I ever like, came into basketball, and if you saw me back in grade eight, you would never think that I could, I'd be playing like travel basketball in a club team right now. Like, back in grade eight, I couldn't even make a layup or dribble with my left hand. When I went to the tryouts, I was about to get cut from the team in my grade eight season. But then somehow I made the team. Coach Q used to coach for one of the teams that I played for and he was friends with Kamish. And uh, he was refing one of our games back in grade eight. And that's the first time I met him. He was a ref and I was a player. And after the game, like he came up to me. He's like, oh, I like your game. And he's like, you can go a long way. And ever since then, I've been working with him and Kamish. Mohaddis is basically an underdog. Guys didn't look at him, worked really hard. And we just put in work. We didn't care what people thought. We just thought if you put in the work, you put in the effort, you get the results, eventually, and it takes time, it's not, it doesn't happen overnight, you will get the respect or the appreciation that, that is deserved for that role. The summer before grade 10, we went to the Genesis Center. We worked out there two hours every single day, like 9 a.m. to 11, every single day, like nonstop. And I don't, if it wasn't for them, I don't think I'd be where I am right now. Legends basketball means a lot. Like, I don't think I'd be playing club basketball right now if it wasn't for Legends. Like, uh, the club I played for last year, it wasn't really the best experience I had, especially with like the culture and community of the club. But, like, coming into Legends, it's like a whole different like spectrum. It's like everyone's a family. Like, you go, you joke around with everybody. Everyone's cool with each other. It's like brotherhood. Well, I'm grateful that I had a kid like Mohadis to trust me, to give me that you know opportunity. I guess the coach, you know. I'll I trust your vision, I'll work with you, well, let's work together. Because, you know, he's, been, he's a phenomenal player. He's a, for, the, for the amount of basketball opportunities he's gotten, for the amount of time he's put into it, his growth is impressive. And it shows that anyone can do it. Any coach can coach any player. It just takes dedication from both sides, hard work from both sides, and the willingness to take each other to the next level and develop as people.